Hey, Starly here. I'll be going over how to use vectors in Clip Studio Paint. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or even advanced level, you may learn something new here, as I'm going to try to include everything. Vectors in Clip Studio Paint are pretty limited, easy to use, and can help make your drawing process much faster. I'm going over everything there is to know about vectors, so there's a lot here. To make it more simple, I'm breaking this up into three videos. This first one will be about how to create vectors and is perfect for beginners. The second video will be about how to control vectors and manipulate them so they look exactly as we'd like them to. I'll leave a link to it at the top here when it becomes available. The third video will be about how we can draw with vectors and take advantage of them to make life way easier when creating illustrations and comics. I'll be going over some tricks to help speed up your workflow, and also how you can add colors to a vector drawing really quickly. I have a table of contents up on the screen here, so you can bounce around the videos to whichever section you like to learn more about. Vectors are super powerful and can help speed up your drawing work and make it way easier, but there is a lot to know before you can dive in. I'm going to start off very basic here as you need to know fundamentally about vectors before you can use them. If you look online at images, almost every one you see is a type of image called a raster image. If you copy and paste this image into Photoshop, you will see when you zoom far enough in that it's made of tiny squares called pixels, and this is typically what we use from full color illustrations and photos to black and white comics. Now if I blow this image up, you can see an effect I'm sure most have heard of before. Yes, it's the dreaded pixelation effect. This effect is the fear of every graphic designer and digital artist. There is a number of ways to avoid this, and one great way is through vectors. I'm now in a vector program called Affinity Designer. In this program, I can use the tools to create various shapes. So here is a star. When I zoom into this star, you can see there aren't any pixels and the sides are perfectly smooth. This is because vectors are made up of points and curves. Behind every curve you see is a mathematical formula. And you thought you'd never use math as an artist. Sorry for the cheesy joke. But we actually aren't because the computer is doing all the math for us. So we can use these points and curves to create beautiful illustrations like this planet here. And if I want this planet to be really big, bam, it's done. And there's no loss of quality. This is the power of vectors and why we love them so much. But vectors are not always so simple to use. They do require more knowledge, but luckily, Clip Studio Paint does make it very easy. The downside is, however, that Clip Studio Paint is also extremely limited in the capabilities of its vectors. See these planets here? I cannot make this in CSP, and I will explain why shortly. Making a vector in Clip Studio Paint is easy because all you have to do is make a vector layer. You will notice next to the new layer icon is another option with a little box icon in it. Click this and you've made a layer that can use vectors. You will know it's a vector layer because it now has a little box icon. To start adding vectors, you can use any of the usual drawing tools. So you can use the pen tool, the airbrush tool, or figures, and they will become vectors. I'll try using this airbrush tool. Now I'll go to the operation tool and click on it. You can see it has points here, just how my vectors in Affinity Designer had points. Here's where the downsides begin, however. So this is a vector line, but if I zoom in far enough, yes, pixels. So even though the line is a vector, the actual brush effect is still a raster image. Even if I make a box here with the figure tool, when I zoom in, it's also still made up of pixels. This isn't a bad thing on Clip Studio Paint's part. You can see the same thing happens when I do this in Photoshop too. It's just a limitation of them being raster programs, and this is why we cannot make logos in Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint. 
you should only make logos or vector clip arts in a vector-based program like Affinity Designer or Illustrator because they don't have this limitation. Just keep in mind that this is a vector line, but the appearance will be the same as a raster image. Another limitation with vectors in Clip Studio Paint, and this one is kind of weird because Photoshop doesn't have this limitation, is that you can only make vector lines. So if I wanted this square filled in with color, I have to do it on a raster layer. So I will have to create a new layer and then fill it in. Also, there is an easy way to do this, and it may also make creating flat colors for your drawings very easy. I will be getting into coloring later on. You cannot color with vectors, since even though its appearance is a raster image, the raster appearance cannot be manipulated in vector format. You would have to change this to a raster layer by right-clicking on the layer name, then select Rasterize. And now you can color this. Beware though, you cannot turn a raster layer into a vector layer. You can only change a vector layer into a raster layer. It is possible to do in some vector programs, but they are limited and don't always do a good job. Regardless, it's not something you can do in Clip Studio Paint at all. One last very important thing, always be careful when you are merging vector layers. Sometimes when you merge a vector layer into another one, it will now become a raster layer. I have lost vectors this way, so please be careful. To be on the safe side, instead of merging a layer, I will use this transfer to lower layer option, so I'm more likely to be paying attention and making sure it stays as a vector. I then delete the now empty layer. There isn't a right or wrong answer here. It is entirely up to you if you want to do your entire drawing as vectors or just for a part of it. For me, I do part of my drawing in vectors. I typically reserve vectors for backgrounds, objects, and line effects. I use them for these things because they're easy to control and the line information is a bit less important. I don't use them for characters because the line information is more complicated. What I mean by that is when I draw this line on a vector layer, if you look closely, you can see it changes a bit. When I draw lines on a raster layer, they don't change at all. This might not be a huge deal for a simple character where you can easily adjust a line, but for my characters, they are more detailed, so I prefer to keep the control over the line information as much as possible. Also, when I'm drawing characters, I just don't need the amount of control that I would for, say, a background that has a lot of straight lines. This is a really disappointing part with vectors in Clip Studio Paint and why you absolutely cannot use Clip Studio Paint to create a logo. It's so sad. Typically in vector programs, when you create a text box, your text will be in what's called a live state. This means you can still go in and retype the text however you need it. However, when we create graphics and hand them off to a printer, they might not have the same font that we have. We can do one of two things, provide the font to the printer or we can expand the text. Expanding the text means we convert the live text into vector shapes so we cannot edit it anymore, but we have no risk of the text changing at all. With Clip Studio Paint, the default is the live text as usual. If I want to expand this text, I would go right click on the layer Go to Convert Layer and select Vector Layer as the type. There are also some vector options down here, but none of them will matter for this purpose. Click OK. And now you can see the text has changed. And now it looks like it's lost its integrity, the details are gone, it's basically not usable. 
This is happening because of the limitation of vectors in Clip Studio. When you expand text in a vector program, it becomes a shape. But when you do the same in Clip Studio, it becomes a vector line. There may be some instances where this is useful, but only if losing the integrity of the font is okay, which I can't imagine it would be in the vast majority of situations. And that is everything you need to know to get started with vectors in Clip Studio. Please check out the next parts, and if you found something helpful here, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or feedback, leave a comment below and I will try to reply.